Hello there. Thank you so much for joining us. This is News Channel Nebraska. My name is Eric McKay. Let's take a look at our top stories today. Beginning in southeast Nebraska, where dangerous, dry, windy conditions remain, and firefighters had another battle on their hands Thursday afternoon, this time in southwest Gage County. Doug Kennedy has more. Firefighters and equipment from Odell, Diller, Wymore, Blue Springs, and Beatrice Rural responded to a quickly moving fire north of the PWF Road and east of Southwest 61st, commonly known as the Odell Blacktop. The fire appeared to start in the middle of a soybean field about a half mile north of the PWF, fanned by winds from the south gusting to 25 miles an hour. Grass rigs from the departments were fighting the flames in fields, with fire personnel standing by at least one farm home and outbuildings to protect them off West Olive Road to the north. Several farmers were lined up with tractors and discs helping to cut fire lines around the blaze, trying to keep it from spreading. Several of the fields in that area had already been harvested, but there was nearby corn and soybeans still in the field. There was also a report Thursday afternoon of a hot spot rekindling from a fire the past weekend. That flare up in the Beatrice Rural District was near South 36th Road and U.S. Highway 136, about three miles east of Beatrice. Another hot spot rekindling was located along the Holmesville Road near US 136. The Atris Rural and a fire unit from the Homestead National Historical Park were sent to that location. From near Odell, Doug Kennedy, News Channel, Nebraska. The month of October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month and an organization in Nebraska is doing its part to raise both awareness for its cause and funding for its operation with a cornhole tournament this weekend. Tim Hackett has more from Fairbury. Awareness, advocacy, acceptance. Those are three core services that Hope Crisis Center supplies to survivors and victims of domestic violence across Southeast Nebraska all year long. Whatever they're in need of, we provide that so they can move on to the next chapter of their life. October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, so the whole Hope Crisis Center crew gathered this week in Fairbury to put the final touches on their plans for their big annual fundraiser. Coming up this Saturday in Wilbur, it's a charity cornhole tournament they call Tossing Out Domestic Violence. And just like all of their events, this one aims to help increase awareness and knowledge of the problems that domestic violence presents. The things that we deal with, domestic violence, sexual assault, are things that thrive in silence and darkness. And for so much of history, we just haven't wanted to talk about it. We haven't wanted to believe that these things are happening in our communities. We have to build that awareness so other people know about us. Of course, if you're not affected by domestic violence, a lot of times you don't know it's happening in your community. But it is. It's happening everywhere. But this Saturday's event is about more than just tossing beanbags. Fundraiser. Executive Director Carmen Hinman says Hope has lost more than $150,000 in grant funding, a major hit to a small nonprofit which relies heavily on external funds just to stay afloat and continue to help survivors thrive. The last thing that we want to do is to have to turn away any services to anybody that's in need. We actually feel like we fundraise all the time. Sadly, um, we're appreciative, but it is something that we, we have to do to keep things alive at our organization. A small staff of nine that serves and assists more than 600 people per year across seven Nebraska counties, Hope Crisis Center is an essential service to many people at a critical crossroads in their lives. Um, our work can be deflating, you know, but also it just takes that one family that you know that you've helped. In Fairbury, Tim Hackett, News Channel Nebraska. Got an important recall for parents to know about. Fisher Price recalling more than 2 million baby swings because of a risk of suffocation. Five babies died between 2012 and 2022. According to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, in most of those cases, the infants who died were unrestrained and bedding materials were added to the product. The swing should never be used for sleep and bedding materials anyway and should never be added to it. The Fisher Price Snugga Swings were sold at Amazon, Toys R Us, Walmart, and Target. If you have one, you should remove the headrest and the body support insert from the seat pad before continuing to use the swing for your baby. Also, Fisher Price offering a $25 refund to anyone who removes and destroys the headrest and the body support insert. 
Well, the new look Star Stadium is now open at Kearney Catholic High School. Michael Shively was at the facility's dedication ceremony and tells us more about the $6.8 million complex. Better outdoor athletic facilities has been on the minds of many Kearney Catholic supporters for decades. Jonathan Nicola has been thinking about it since he was a student. 1990s as a kid out here running on this track and kind of wondering how, how can we get something better and understanding at that time that things take time, especially things that cost money when there's other priorities. Now a track and cross country coach, Nicola decided it was time to take action. He went to school leadership for support, then to the community as the fundraising campaign co-chair. You can't let that around you get you down when you're passionate about something. You have to push through it and eventually people start to believe, you know, if you come up with a good plan, you present it the right way, you're, you're fair, uh, folks start to go, okay, I see how that can work. The Stars hosted their first football game at the renovated Miles Field two weeks ago. Sarah Homan with the Kearney Catholic Foundation says the stands hold 1,500 and nearly 2,100 people came through the gates. Oh, it's magical. It really feels like a blessing to um, and, a, and a testimony to so many people who for really multiple decades have put time and energy into both maintaining the facility we had and dreaming of a better facility. The first football game at the new Stars Stadium is complete, but there's still some work to go on the complex. There needs to be striping done to the track. Some sod is scheduled to be installed, and so is the Holy Family Shrine. That's all weather dependent on the timeline. The good news, though, by the next football game, the concession stand will be ready to go. And for the first time in a long time, there will be restrooms on site. The most exciting thing yesterday was I flushed a toilet. So if you've spent any time out here, um, you know that we have been using porta potties for decades. And so to know that the bathrooms will be functioning is really exciting. Now that the turf is being broken in and the stadium is dedicated, Nicola is looking forward to the first track practice in the spring. I was tired of having kids turn their ankles and slip and fall and scrape a knee and not be able to do hurdles. Like I was tired of all that. I think every day is going to be pretty surreal. But yeah, the first one will be will be a happy moment. In Kearney, Michael Shively, News Channel, Nebraska. The city of Norfolk has a new Johnny Carson statue. It was unveiled yesterday in the corner of River Point Square. The artists who created the sculpture say it portrays Carson in his professional attire, standing in a very specific stance that they say best represents his intelligence and his wit. We were very excited to get this commission because growing up, I would say Johnny Carson was my favorite show. I watched him every night on The Tonight Show, and uh, I loved his humor. And I noticed some things about him. One was he had excellent posture. You know, as an artist, you, you pick up on those things. And uh, I remember he always had this hand in his pocket, and he was always gesturing with his hand. The statue took almost a year to build. Now it sits in downtown Norfolk for public display. Local tourism officials say the statue represents the significance of Norfolk as Johnny's home. This is a great opportunity for us to bring Johnny home. Um, as a tourism director, we get visitors from all over the United States that want to come and see where Johnny Carson was raised. The statue sits right along the Johnny Carson mural at River Point Square in downtown Norfolk. And a central Nebraska brewery thriving, making a somewhat lesser known non-alcoholic beverage for its customers and now a much larger new client. Ryan Valenta explains. A fermented tea beverage, better known as kombucha, is driving big business at a local brewery in central Nebraska. We had to like teach people how to say the word kombucha, let alone what kombucha, why it was good for you to drink. And so there was a steep learning curve. Jesse and Nathan Haft are the co-owners of First Street Brewing and Ensign Beverage Inc. in Hastings, which makes both beer and kombucha and is the only brewery in Nebraska to make both drinks under the same roof. Like its fermented counterpart, kombucha takes about three to four weeks from start to a finished product. Nathan says as a brewery, it's important to have a tasty non-alcoholic option for certain guests. I have several friends right now doing sober October. You know, yeah. Dry January. 
Uh, there are times when they still want to be able to go out and have a drink with their friends, but they don't necessarily have to have an alcoholic beverage. One batch of kombucha made by the Hafes and the Ensign Beverage crew yields about 360 gallons, but with a new partnership deal in place, that number could soon be rising. Nebraska's name, image, and likeness program, the 1890 Initiative, has inked a partnership with Ensign Beverage to be the official kombucha of Husker athletes. Ensign has provided its specialty drink to the Husker training table in Lincoln since 2020, but Jesse and Nathan are excited for their product to begin the next chapter and continue being part of a healthy routine for Husker athletes and coaches. The athletes are already familiar with it. Uh, already, It's already part of their nutritional regimen, so it was something that once introduced was easy for them to be like, yes, this is a great product. It's kind of fun, like the athletes are drinking it, we know that, but you know the coaches are drinking it too. Yeah. So that's kind of fun too. They're real excited about it. And so we always get compliments from the coaches when we go in because it's something, you know, it's a, you got, we got to keep them healthy as well. The current flavor of kombucha under the 1890 partnership is Champions Cherry Limeade, which the idea for came from a certain Husker team. The volleyball team, um, we were standing around one time, we were talking to them and they were all like, cherry, cherry, do cherry. So there we are, cherry. Yeah, we're like, cherry limeade it is, we got it. With each unit of kombucha sold, a portion of the sales go directly to the 1890 initiative to support all Husker athletes. Reporting in Hastings, Ryan Valenta with News Channel Nebraska. And you can stay up to date with the very latest by following us online. Head to newschannelnebraska.com, click on the news tab there. You can also follow us on X, like us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend. You're watching News Channel Nebraska.